come to what's traditionally regarded as the second of Jesus' sayings from the cross. Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. So this evening we, we meet two famous characters uh, from, the, from the gospel story. Um, the, uh, the two criminals who are crucified with Jesus. We don't know anything about them, right? We don't have any, any backstory to them. Um, we don't have names for them. A Christian tradition is seen fit to give them names, by the way, because you, know, you, you need names. And so uh, going back, I, I think it goes back to like the 4th or 5th century, um, the, uh, the apocryphal Gospel of Nicodemus, uh, which I have not read. I assume you probably haven't either. Um, but um, provides names for them which have come down in, in Christian history. And so um, the, uh, the, the first thief who speaks, the one who, who rails against Jesus, is, is known as, as Gestus or Justus. And uh, the, the second thief is known as, as Dismas. Um, now, these are clearly not their original names. Uh, I believe uh, Justus means something like moaning. And, uh, and Dismas comes from the, the Greek word for sunset, and, uh, which is kind of an interesting name. And I, and I, I think that the idea, right, is that, that he's the one who, who converted at, at the last hour. the one who, the worker who was called into the vineyard at sunset. But that's, right, but that's just what, you know, something some preacher made up, right? Um, we don't really know anything about them. What do we, what do we call, what do we call them normally? What's that? Yeah, yeah, and how do we refer to them, right? The two thieves. What's that? Yeah, what else do they call them, though? The good thief, right? Have you guys heard that? Yeah, yeah, the good thief. Um, which I, I think, truthfully, I, I think misses the point, right? The idea, right, that the one guy is, is good and, and the other guy is bad. And you see in Christian art, um, very often you look at, at pictures of the crucifixion, um, the, uh, take a look at this, right, next time you see some art. Typically the... Um, Dismiss the so-called good thief is, will be on Jesus' right hand, right? It's like the sheep and the goats, right? He'll be on Jesus' right hand, and he's usually looking at Jesus. I didn't look at our cover to see. Um, this one is not actually very helpful, uh, but, but in a lot of painting uh, pictures, you'll see the, the good thief is actually looking at Jesus. I should have I checked this for this before we... Uh, before I had Kate print it up. But uh, often the good thief is lo- he's on Jesus' right hand. He's looking at Jesus. Right and the um, and and the so-called bad thief is on Jesus' left hand, right, the place of the goats, and he's usually he's usually looking down. I, I guess you know, sort of like headed towards his eventual <laughs> destination. Um, but I, but I think really to um, to sort of divide them up as right the, the good thief and the bad thief is is to, to miss the point because it suggests right that the, the one guy had something in him. Um, that that earns that earns this word from Jesus, and and I think that's to miss the point, right? Because what does he say about himself? He's getting what he deserved, yeah, right. And and we don't know, you know, we don't know what that was, but by his own admission, he's getting what he deserved. And so this is a story not about someone who was, right, you know, like good enough to earn a, a good word from Jesus right at the end, right, but about someone who, who didn't deserve it and, and who yet, even knowing he doesn't deserve it, um, in faith, right, with whatever little faith that is, reaches out to Jesus to claim what he doesn't deserve.
there, this scene gets set up earlier in, in the Gospels, um, and I, it's, it's easy to miss, but there's a, uh, an episode in the Gospels, not in Luke, but in Mark and Matthew, where, where James and John come to Jesus. Um, and, and Matthew clarifies it's actually their mom, right? Like, like they, they're not brave enough to go to Jesus themselves. They actually, like, get their mom to go talk to Jesus. And, and you remember what they ask him? One on the left and one on the right. Uh, and in Matthew's Gospels, it, it's, it specifically says, when, when you come into your kingdom. Uh, in, Mark, in Mark, they say, in, in your glory. Right, we want to sit one on your your right and one on your left, and and Jesus says you don't know what you're saying. And um, and then he asks them, you know, can can you drink the cup that I'm about to drink? And they're like, yes, we can. Um, and he says, you will, right? And he says, and yet, um, it's it's not for me to to give out that place, right? But it's it's Basically, it's reserved for those for whom it has been chosen. And this is the, this is the place where you get somebody on Jesus' right and, and on Jesus' left. And over his head, it says, this is the king of the Jews. See, this is when Jesus comes into his kingdom, uh, according to the Gospels, here like on the cross. The disciples think, right, there might be some tough stuff that we have to do, and then, right, and then it's the glory. But it's actually right here on the cross that Jesus is, is being king. This is, Jesus is, is coming into his kingdom right here on the cross in between two thieves. It's these, these two thieves, these guys who are getting what they deserve, who are on Jesus' right and his left, as he comes into his kingdom. See, because Jesus has come to be, he's come to be the prince of thieves, right? He's come to be, he's become to be the, the, the savior of criminals. He's come to be, be the friend of sinners. And so he comes into his kingdom not surrounded by his friends, right? Not, not surrounded by the people who, who went through the hard times with him and have come out on the other side, right? Not, not surrounded by, you know, the good and the great, but, but surrounded by crucified thieves. But see, that's what Jesus has come to do, right? To come to, to die with thieves, to be counted with thieves, to be mocked by thieves in order to save thieves. The Son of God comes to be counted with sinners so that sinners might be counted with, might be counted as children of God. And it's a gift that he gives to this, to this criminal the one who in his, his desperation. And, and scarcely, I can't imagine that he really thinks much is going to come of this, but, you know, then his, in his desperation, asks Jesus to remember him, right? And Jesus says, today, right, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus on occasion reminded the, uh, reminded his disciples, right, that, that, the last will be first and the first will be last. And it's, it's literally the case here, here on the cross that right, the, the last one who comes to faith in Jesus is the first one to enter paradise. Um, I was reading a reflection on this by, um, by uh, Richard John Newhouse. Um, and, uh, and he says, it, it, it might have seemed like a poor catch when Jesus arrived in paradise that afternoon. <laughs> with one measly thief. But that's always how, how Jesus operates. And if Jesus has come to, to join sinners, right, to, to be the, the, the friend of sinners and the, the savior of sinners, even for the guy who, 
right, repents at, at the very, very last minute. Um, his grace is there for you too, right? No matter, no matter what you've done. No matter how, how frequently you've messed up no matter how, how late you are in, in coming to him, right? With nothing, nothing that you can present to him, only, only your need. I'm reminded of, uh, I'm reminded of someone I, I knew uh, in Connecticut, someone I had the, the privilege to meet. Uh, his name was Ed. And Ed was someone I met, and he was in his, I don't know, he was in his mid-60s. And, and not in good health. Um, he was not a member of our congregation. I met Ed because the hospital called one night because they thought Ed was going to die. And, and they called, uh, they, they wanted to know if he, um, I, I don't know if they talked to him, probably talked to his wife, he was unconscious. They talked to his wife to see if they had a church and they said, she said, well, you know, not really, but you know, we were married in a Lutheran church like 35 years ago. And so, you know, so they, they started, like, open the phone book and started calling Lutheran churches in the area. And, and you could tell, like, the luck they were having because they got down to Zion Lutheran Church. <laughs> and, I <happened> to, <laughs> and I happened to be the guy that was dumb enough to pick up the phone, right? <laughs> and they're like, we've got this guy, he went to Lutheran Church 35 years ago. And uh, would you come see him? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, you know, at that point, you're already on the phone. You can't say no. So you know, so I you know drive down to to Milford Hospital, and and this guy's unconscious in the ER, and I go and you know, I, I don't know, read something out of the you know like the the pastoral care companion, right? And and uh, I, I I don't even think his wife was there at that point, you know. So I you know prayed and. And then I came back a couple days later to check on him, and, uh, and he was conscious. He'd made it, and, you know, started talking to him a little bit, and said, hey, you know, can I read a little scripture for you, with you, and, you know, say a prayer with you? And he's like, yeah, sure. And so, you know, and I, I, I prayed with him. And, and anyway, he's like, will you come back and see me again? I'm like, well, I suppose, sure. And uh, so I, I, you know, wound up coming to see him every so often, and, and he was in and out of the in and out of the hospital, um, and, and this was a guy who, you know, quite frankly, look, he'd, he'd been in church 35 years before, right? He, he had more or less, um, you know, spent his adult life, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't a thief, he was a, a decent guy, you know, maybe a little rough around the edges, but he was someone who spent his adult life pretty much ignoring God, right? And yet, somehow, through that, you know, Bible reading and, and prayer and talking, God reached out and, and grabbed him. And, and he started, you know, he started, he dug up his like old King James Bible that his mom had given him, you know, and, and he started reading it. And, and his, I think his wife was kind of baffled. She was, she was like, you really believe in this Jesus stuff, don't you? He said, yeah, I do. And, um, he managed, he, he, was, he, had a, he was healthy enough, he had this one stretch where he was healthy enough, we made it to church, like, to our church one time, and he was so excited to come and, and to be there for church uh, that one time. And he lived probably, I don't know, a year, 18 months, maybe after that, that first visit. Um, and, and towards the end of his life, he was, you know, he he had fallen, fallen ill, and it wasn't, wasn't looking good, and he was, he was in the hospital. And, and one day, he, he calls me up, and he says, he says Pastor, I, I, had a, I had a dream that Jesus came and talked to me. And I don't remember what the whole gist of it was. I, you know, I think it was just kind of a, a comforting thing that, you know, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, not yet, but, but soon, Right? And, and you're going to be with me. And uh, he said, was it real? I said, I don't know, it was your dream. Um, and, I, you know, I, I think sometimes Jesus, right, Jesus does comfort people in, in ways that are, are beyond our, 
are explaining. Um, and, uh, you know, those are things we should always test against Scripture. But, but you know, Jesus will do what Jesus does, right? And, I, you know, I don't know whether this was, you know, a little too much medication or, or a visit from the Lord, but, but wouldn't it be just like Jesus? To, like, I, Jesus has never appeared to me, but it would be just like him to appear to this guy, right, who, you know, who waited 35 years um, at the last minute. And, and a, about a week after that, Ed died. And, and I can guarantee you that, that right now he is in paradise with his Lord. Because Jesus came into the world, Jesus died on the cross to seek and save sinners even those who ignored him, even those who were his enemies. He came into the world to seek and save Dismas and Ed and you and me. And his promise is that you will be with him in paradise. In Jesus' name, amen.